All right, class, this is uh, the last segment on industrial America during the Gilded Age, in which we will look at technology and the impact of industrialization. Um, so looking at technology during the Gilded Age, um, you know, vital to all this industrial progress that's going on during the late, latter part of the 19th century were these inventions uh, that led to greater pro productivity and then a larger variety of mass-produced goods I at home. Um, some, uh, some of the important, uh, I guess you could say, inventions during this time period um, were, was first, you know, I guess, I guess it starts before the Civil War uh, with Samuel Morse's uh, invention of the, uh, the telegraph in 1844. Um, but by after the Civil War um, in 1866 and 1900, uh, you see that the whole world and every continent is going to be connected uh, through these telegraph cables. Um, you know, 1866, you have the transatlantic cable uh, invented. Now, all of a sudden, you know, you can, you can, uh, you know, communicate across the Atlantic Ocean instantaneously. So now you start to see with the expansion of the telegraph network, uh, communication is getting easier and the world is getting smaller. Um, some other noteworthy inventions of the time period, uh, the typewriter, the cash register, the calculating machine, the admin machine, the Kodak camera, the fountain pen, the safety razor and blade, um, but perhaps the greatest inventors uh, and inventions of the time period uh, were done by two people, Thomas Edison and George Westinghouse. Uh, Thomas Edison had found some early success um, in the 1860s as a young inventor, and he took these, uh, these, uh, these resources that he was able to gain from these early inventions and he created the first modern research laboratory in Menlo Park, New Jersey. And uh, in this research laboratory, it was the first time a collection of people worked on a team uh, to, uh, to, to invent new technologies rather than just going at it alone. Um, you know, some of the important inventions that came out of Menlo Park, um, the first, uh, you know, motion picture camera, um, you know, the phonograph, uh, you know, the process, he started the process for generating electric power. Um, but the most important thing that I believe came out of Menlo Park and Thomas Edison uh, was the first practical electric light bulb. Um, it's with the invention of the light bulb, and then you couple that with George Westinghouse, uh, his, his invention for the transformer, producing high voltage alternating current. Uh, you take these two things here, and now all of a sudden you have American society and you have American cities, and more importantly, American workplaces uh, being lit up by electric power. And so now you start to see America move away from having their schedule, their work schedule, and the lifestyle dictated by the rising and the setting of the sun, and now it's going to be, uh, you know, dictated by man. All right, electricity, factories can open up longer, um, you know, uh, bars, saloons, uh, any indoor amusements, uh, houses, street cars, uh, street roads, and they're all going to be run by electricity, causing the quote-unquote day to last longer. This day could be, uh, you know, social and leisure time, or this day could mean, uh, you know, work. Um, the impact of industrialization here. Um, a couple things, good and bad. Uh, the first impact we want to see with industrialization is the concentration of wealth uh, during this time period. Um, you know, during, uh, about 1900, you see, uh, because of the rise of industry, about 10% of the American population owns about 9 tenths percent of the wealth. And, you know, these people were not shy about showcasing how much money they have. They threw, uh, you know, lavish parties. Uh, they, they sailed on enormous yachts. Uh, they lived in these huge mansions. Uh, so you could definitely tell who was, uh, you know, doing pretty well for themselves during this time period. And what's interesting here is that, you know, this gap between rich and poor was, was growing. Um, but people tended to ignore this fact that the rich were getting richer and the poor were getting poorer uh, for a couple different reasons. Number one, uh, there's something called the Horatio Alger myth. myth. Um, A-L-G-E-R. Horatio Alger was a popular writer at the time period, and he brought, uh, set out a series of books in which, uh, you know, in every book it was the same thing. It was all about this rags to riches story, where this young man, he came, comes from uh, humble origins, modest means, uh, through hard work, 
from being honest, and with just a little bit of luck, he's able to uh, move up that, that economic ladder into a higher, uh, you know, economic bracket. And so people tended to cling to this, uh, you know, to this sentiment that if you work hard, if you're a good person, uh, then you're going to be able to, uh, to improve your, your social standard and your economic standing in life. Um, Another uh, impact of industrialization during this time period, you do see uh, the, expand, uh, the expansion of the middle class. Um, you know, with, uh, with industrialization, uh, you know, you, uh, you saw jobs being created such as accountants, clerical workers, salespersons, and then in turn these middle class employees increased the demand for services like doctors and lawyers, public employees, storekeepers, um, and so you do see the expansion of the middle class there uh, through the creation of jobs and demand. Uh, one of the other uh, impacts of uh, industrialization that you see occur during this time period um, is that most people are now uh, becoming wage earners. Um, you know, their lives or their uh, their income is going to be dictated by the amount of hours that they put in, uh, you know, to a job per week. Uh, most people were working about 10 hours a day, six days a week. And then especially in factory jobs where a large supply of the workforce were immigrants, um, you know, in some instances women as well, um, you know, and even in some cases uh, you could still see child labor there. Um, you know, these wages that they earned were either by piecemeal, um, you know, you for every piece of uh, you know the product that you produce, you got a certain pay for that. Um, or if it was daily, um, you know, the the wages that they earn were just barely enough to get by, um, if you could even call it that. So these wage earners, um, you know, they're definitely, uh, you know, you don't see, um, you know, any sort of minimum wage. You don't see any sort of um, I guess you could say uh, move to to make sure that these uh, these wages that they earned were uh, in fact a living wage or the conditions that they worked in were safe for them or that you know maybe 10 or 14 hours a day you know was too long and so out of these uh, these wage earners uh, that started to uh, to sprout up during the uh, latter part of the 19th century you also started to see the rise of the labor movement um, and in class you're going to look at you know some of the causes for the labor movement and looking at two labor unions in particular, uh, the trade union known as the Knights of Labor and the craft union known as the American Federation of Labor. Uh, so be sure to, uh, to take notes in class when we discuss that. Thanks for watching.